On the final day of the summer transfer window in early September 2013, excitement had built in the North London streets around the Emirates Stadium. Meza Ozil was rumoured to be moving to Arsenal from Real Madrid, and with each update on progress, the clamour in those streets grew. Finally, a £42.4 million transfer was announced, a new club transfer record, and an uninhibited, impromptu celebration began that lasted throughout the evening. Eight years later, the relationship between Arsenal and Ozil would end in a protracted divorce. What began as a love affair, with those street parties and supporters deed-polling umlauts into their Twitter handles, had turned very sour. So, what happened? Even the good years between Ozil and Arsenal weren't simple. A wonderfully talented and creative player, the German was a consistent source of assists and watchable moments. Nevertheless, he operated much of the time in the centre of a culture war, caught between those who appreciated the subtle nuance of his style and others who bemoaned his perceived lack of physicality and work rate. And whatever the virtues of either argument, Ozil rarely existed outside of that context. And Arsenal, who had long since fallen off the post-millennial Invincibles era peak, often bounced between extremes as a side, exacerbating that frustration. But Ozil's career in England would reach a fork in the road in 2018, when two key events took place that changed his relationship with the club. First, in January, it was announced that he signed a new three-year contract at the age of 29. Including wages, bonuses and image rights, it was worth an estimated £350,000 per week. This deal would become both a millstone for the club and a significant obstacle in their path to, eventually, a whole-scale rebuild. But secondly, in April of 2018, Arsene Wenger announced that he'd be leaving Arsenal at the end of the season. Ozil had been Wenger's signing at the time, when the Frenchman exerted enormous influence over every aspect of club life, but the two also enjoyed a special relationship. Wenger wrote in his autobiography about the need not to be too harsh in criticism of Ozil, and how, like all artists, he needs to feel supported in his creativity. So, in the summer of 2018, Unai Emery replaced Wenger and brought a different approach to the mercurial playmaker. Emery and Ozil did start off on good footing. The latter was even made captain several times. But he was no longer a guaranteed starter. On a few occasions, he was left on the bench or even left out of the squad for important games, with Emery justifying those decisions with pointed remarks about the need for physicality in his team. Simultaneously, for a variety of reasons, Ozil suffered through one of the worst 18 months of his career. After the 2018 World Cup, his international career had ended in deep and bitter acrimony. In the summer of 2019, he, his wife and teammate Said Kolasinic were the victims of an attempted carjacking in London. And at the end of the year, Arsenal would distance themselves from comments Ozil made on Instagram in which he condemned China's treatment of the Uyghur population in Xinjiang. The club sacked Emery in November of 2019, but Ozil quickly fell foul of his interim replacement, Freddie Jumberg. Jumberg had been a member of the Invincibles team. He was club royalty. In a home loss to Manchester City, Ozil reacted petulantly to being substituted by throwing his gloves off and kicking out of them in anger. In the aftermath, Jumberg was happy to lay down the law. At Arsenal, that's not how we behave. That's not what we do, he said. Mikel Arteta's arrival was initially good news. In fact, Ozil enjoyed a long, unbroken run of starts before the pandemic arrived and football shut down in the spring of 2020. But that was another complicated period for him. During the game's hiatus, Arsenal players and Arteta himself agreed a 12.5% pay cut. Ozil declined, blaming a lack of advance notice prior to the announcement and stating that he didn't believe contracts should be changed without the involvement of a player's representative. According to reporting by The Athletic, he also wanted assurances about how any funds from the wage cut would be used. As players, we all want to contribute, but we need more information, and many questions were unanswered, he said at the time. Ultimately, instead of agreeing to the pay cut, he used the money to fund food donations to homeless shelters and schools across London. By now, his relationship with Arsenal had begun to deteriorate to pre-pandemic levels, according to an Athletic article written by Art de Roche and David Ornstein. Even after football resumed, Ozil would never be picked to play for the club again, with a perceived lack of training intensity blamed rather than any political issues. 
His last appearance was against West Ham in March 2020, a match in which he provided an assist for Alexandre Lacazette with one of his final touches. With over 15 months of his contract still left to run, he was about to become football's biggest white elephant. It was a strange period. Ozil would periodically offer social media commentary on Arsenal games in which he wasn't involved. In one particularly surreal episode in October 2020, he responded to the news that the Arsenal employee who'd played at Gunnosaurus for 27 years and was now being made redundant by offering to pay his salary. A war was afoot, but by the end of that month, it was over. He was omitted from Mikel Arteta's Premier and Europa League squads, confirming that he had all but played his last game. Reporting for The Guardian, Nick Ames wrote that Ozil will continue to be an expensive problem until the end of his contract, unless an agreement can be reached between all parties in the meantime. And that is what happened. In mid-January 2021, with six months of his contract left to run and a reported £7 million in earnings still unpaid, Ozil and Arsenal reached an agreement for the early termination of his contract. Finally, they brought an end to a saga which had drained the energy from the player, the club, and the Arsenal fan base. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic is home to some of the world's best sports journalists, including journalists dedicated to each Premier League team, so every fan gets the coverage they deserve, not just the big clubs. And you can try it for free now for 30 days. See the link in the description.